In Mark chapter 8, amen, and I want you to hold it, amen, and we're going to, amen, be dealing with a few verses in Mark 8, but I just want you to be there when I get there. Amen. 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 I decided to make this a series. Amen. I want to do part two of our series now called I Got Plans. I Got Plans. Look at your neighbor and say, I've got plans. I got plans. I got plans. I got plans. Amen. I got plans. I got plans. Look at your other neighbor. They weren't really looking at you. Tell them I got plans. I got plans. I got plans. I got plans. Y'all praying with me today? Yes. Y'all praying for me? Yes. Just don't do what? Pray against you. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray against me. Thank you, Norman. I finally can hear myself. My brothers and sisters, being true to our mantra of being impact nation means that it must move from declaration to manifestation. Being true and authentic to our mantra of being impact nation means that it must move, it must transition from declaration to manifestation. Right. This idea of impact is not something that we just say, but it's also something we see. We don't spend all of our year declaring something with our mouth that is not manifested in our life. Come on, sir. I believe that there is power in declaration, affirmation, and speaking. But I believe it loses its power if it stops there. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the honest reality is many of us have become frustrated because we've been saying a thing and we have not been seeing the results of what yeah. we say. Right there. Yes, sir. Right there. I mean, you know the cue words. When praises go up, blessings come down. You know the cue words. I'm blessed and highly favored. You know the cue words that God works together for your good. But what happens when you're speaking good with your mouth? but you're experiencing bad in your life. Mm. Come on. Many of you all have learned very quickly that after you became saved, that salvation did not exempt you from trauma. Say that again. Can I teach like I want to? Come on now. In fact, you have realized that it was after you got saved that all hell start breaking loose in your life. Uh -huh. Amen. And what happens to that regard is that we begin to wrestle with this idea of sticking to what brought us here. Our praise, our admiration, our belief in God. And that's why the church is suffering from runaway saints. Come on. Reverend, don't do it. Because when the going gets tough, uh -huh. folks start going. Mm. Mm. But I need about five people in the house to realize that you're much better with Jesus in the midst of your problem. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to tell you. Than you are without him if everything seems to be going good in your life. Because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And I say that to say this to you, my brothers and sisters. Just hold on a little while longer. I need somebody to praise God for that. I know you feel like giving up. I know you're confused. I know it seems like stuff is not shaking in your life. I know it seems like your life is spiraling. I know it seems like there is no end, amen, at the end of the tunnel. I know it seems like that valley, my brothers and sisters, is never ending. Yeah. There was the psalmist who said in the Psalter, yea, though I walk through the valley, 
of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And I came to remind somebody today that he's with you. Oh, yes, he is. I know you're grieving, but he's with you. I know you don't have a lot of money, but he's with you. I know your job is troublesome, but he's with you. I know you got relationship issues, but he's with you. I know you got mental conditions, but he's with you. Because it was that great Jesus said, Lo, I'll be with you always. Even to the end of the age. Something is about to start shaking in our life. It has to. It has to. Nudge your neighbor, don't touch him, but say, it has to. It has to. And so I know you've heard me say this idea of seeing versus saying over our last two times together, that being Bible study and last Sunday. But I want you to allow me the privilege of continuance in this vein. Yeah. This is where I believe that the forward positioning of this house resides. All right. That God wants to move us from what we say to what we see. Yes, Lord. And so to that end, if we're going to move into the manifestation of impact, you know, being kingdom advancers, being people who disrupts the plans of the enemy, right. being people who shift atmospheres. That's what it means to be impacted. I'm advancing the kingdom of God, that I'm disrupting the plans of the enemy. In other words, that the enemy's power will be limited because we serve a limitless God. Let me say this. This ain't in my notes, but God told me to tell you that he's about to eradicate the plans that the enemy has architected over your life. You know that scripture say, I know the plans that he has for you, but the enemy also has plans, and the enemy plan is to get you off of your game. In fact, he told the prophet of the Bible that the enemy desires to sift you like wheat. In other words, the, the enemy desires to crush you and make you a person of no good and a person that's irrelevant. But look at your neighbor and say, you're relevant today. You are. You are. I just believe we're in a season as a body of people where God is about to elevate the faithful. I, I, I believe that, Phil. I believe it. I, 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 just, I, I just believe it. Call me crazy and you can call me whatever you want to. But I believe that we are literally in a season where God is about to elevate the faithful. Yeah. But not God, not only is God about to elevate the faithful, God is about to expose the phony. Y'all missed that up in here. God will elevate the faithful, but expose the phony. In other words, those people who are spiritual manipulators will be exposed for the demonic representatives that they are. But those people who want to have an authentic relationship with God are about to rise up and be the standard for this broken world. Just touch yourself on the shoulder and say, I am the standard. I'm the standard. Lord, help me right up in here. I am the standard. Life got to be better than this. It got to get better. It will get better. It shall get better. I will not suffer. I will not know lack. I will not be in poverty. My prayers will be answered. Because the text said, seek ye first. The kingdom of God, we kingdom advances, and all of his righteousness, then these things shall be added unto you. God is not looking for selfish, God is looking for seekers. I said he ain't looking for selfish, he's looking for seekers. Whoa, I feel you, Holy Ghost. And so, I want you to get this repeated point. That you're going to hear me say that if we're going to be a people of impact, we must plan to create impact. Okay. God said impact is not auto-generated. In other words, there has to be some intentionality. I want to relieve you from this pie in the sky mentality. And I need to push you into some intentionality, into some consistency, into some authentic trust in God. Because I want to tell you this. God has called you, God has called me, and God has called us collectively to be impact creators. 
creators. Impact creators. In other words, at the work of your hand and at the operation of your faithfulness, you are going to make impact happen. You are no longer going to be that low-level employee. I'm trying to be prophetic, but y'all praise is a little pathetic. I said, now I'll keep my word and pack up my bag and go on home. But I'm telling you now that God's saying that you're not going to be the low-level employee. You're not going to be the low-level person on your team. You are the head. You are not the tail. You are the first. You are not the last. You are above. You are not beneath. There is stuff that's about to shake in your life. And wherever you walk, impact will be created. There's going to be some folk who are associated with you that's going to be blessed by the residue of you. They ain't going to even know why they blessed. It's because you spoke to them and because you was in their presence. And it's a shame that some folk are jealous of you. And they jealous of you about some stuff that you didn't even want to have. You didn't want to be there. You didn't want to have this level of accountability. If you could say, you'll say you can have all of this. But God is about to open up the windows of heaven. Oh, my God. And pour us out of abundance of blessing. We don't have room enough to see. Oh, that light is about to shine upon you. Ye shall be like a city that sits on a hill. I feel glory in this house. Yes, I do. I said I feel glory in this house. Tap your neighbor and say, I don't mean you no harm, but I'm sick of this mess. What mess? That stuff that's happening in my life. I'm sick of this mess. I'm sick of folks lying on me. I'm sick of not making enough money. I'm sick of my talents not being seen. I'm sick of my credentials not being effective. I'm sick of this mess. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's our time now church. You got to feel it, you got to sense it, and you got to believe it. This ain't time to put your mouth on God's people. I be praying for folk who put their mouth on me. I pray for them because I know they're in danger. But the Bible say, touch not my anointing. And do my prophet no harm. And you think you're going to get away with dirtying up my name? You think you're going to get away with mistreating me? You think you're going to get away with trying to steal from me? You don't have no idea that it's my prayer that's keeping the hands of God off of you. Bible tells me to pray for them when they treat me bad. Oh, it get hard sometimes, Phil. But I keep praying. And the more I pray, the more he bless me. And as long as he keep blessing me, I'll be satisfied. I ain't got time to worry about people who are not with me. I need to connect with some people who understands that the journey won't always be pretty. That it won't always feel good. But for those who wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength. Come on now. Yes, sir. This 19 years in the making here. For those who wait on the Lord. Yes, sir. Come on now. I'm an impact creator. Dudge your neighbor and say, I'm an impact creator. Come on. Come on. They tell them I'm an impact creator. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so here we are. We're in we're impact creators. Kingdom advances, disruptors of the enemy's plan. Atmosphere shifters. And I heard God say three critical things that we must absorb to see this become a reality. I've said it the last couple of times together. I said we must grow. We must sow. And we must go. We must do what? Grow. 
we must grow. And then we must grow. We must grow, sow, sow, and go. And so what is our growth? I want to talk about growth today. What does our growth start? Our growth starts, get this now if you're taking notes, and I hope you are. Our growth starts with becoming better disciples. Huh. All right. I knew I wouldn't get a shout there. That's why I shouted you in my introduction. <laughs> becoming better what? Disciples. And so I need to ask myself, what are disciples? Let's move later. Disciples are this, simply. Disciples are those who discover a target and follows that target. Okay. Now, most of you all, or some of you all who've been around church, you would say the disciples are follow of Jesus. No, the problem is we have many disciples in church. They just not disciples of the right target. Yeah. Mm. In other words, they're saved, but they're not following Jesus. Okay. Wow. It's so many houses of worship that are enamored by the aesthetics of worship hmm. yeah. that is absent of the spiritual dimension of wow. worship. Wow. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because you can tell when you're building a church of fashion versus a church of disciples. Yes. Huh. Yes. Okay. And God paused me in my track and said, Anthony, you got to start discipling these people. Because the honest reality is, we'll grow, but we'll be a bigger, immature church. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why when somebody, some people get raised, they still broke because they still have poor spending habits. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. See, you have to nurture what you want to become. And it starts with this process of discipleship because as believers, our target is Jesus. So Jesus' disciples are those who follow Jesus. But being a disciple puts you on a type of growth track. Right. Uh -huh. You cannot be discipled and stay immature. Yeah. Right. Come on. You cannot be a disciple and your feelings are easily hurt. Because the pastor didn't strike the right message to your opinion. Now you want to flee and do stuff because you don't want to be taught. I told all of y'all a couple weeks ago, if you stay me long enough, I promise you at some point I'm going to get on your nerves. I just know my personality. That's why some of them clapping up here because they work closely with me. Now, Unc, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't be rude and say y'all get on my nerves too. I can't say that as a pastor. I can't say that. I can't say when I come to church and I'm looking for you, you ain't nowhere to be found what they do. I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say it. You have to understand this area of growth sometimes is going to require the lemon juice to be squeezed out of you a little tougher. Because you cannot become fine wine without going through the wine press that crushes the grapes to make it. I know y'all don't drink wine. I'm talking to people out there. But to make it... I know y'all don't drink wine. Y'all don't drink up here. Y'all holy. Y'all don't drink wine. But anyway, the point still stands that sometimes you got to be crushed and you got to be pressed. Let me say this to you, my brothers and sisters. The reason why we need to be disciple because when God starts really giving us favor, we have to learn how to steward what God gave us. See, the undisciplined will blow the fish that God sends to break your neck. When you don't want training, 
You have to be a perpetual student. You have to want to learn. Never think that you are too smart to learn. In fact, if every room you're in and you're the smartest person in that room, you need to get some more room. Now, I consider myself semi-intelligent, but I was in a room Friday, Phil, where I had to be the lowest one on the totem pole. And I felt good about it because I like to be in a position where I'm not always the teacher. I like to be taught. So every now and then I got to go get teaching so that I can be better in teaching you. I have to have people listen to my sermon and say, yeah, they may have shouted, but you missed that point. Yeah, they may have shouted, but uh, yeah, that text didn't say that. Yeah, they may shout, but what was you trying to say there? Your transitions was not smooth. I need that type of stuff. Amen. People who can see deeper than a hallelujah. All right, all right. Yeah. See, we got to get out of position that all we want is praise. Right. You did good today, girl. You did good today, boy. Sometimes chastisement has to come with our positioning. I said sometimes chastisement has to come. Right. And so we got to be disciples. We got to grow. Growing is essential for effective church, but effective personally in your humane life. Get this now. Get this now. I want to give you some keys to growth, and I'm going to let you go. I would say I'll let you go get to your ham hocks or whatever you eat, but we need to call it ham hocks spirit off some of y'all. Amen. <laughs> Number one, you need to understand that when you're growing, that when you're being discipled, Dr. Culkin, when you're being discipled, Drayshana, when you're being discipled, Elder McDaniel, sometimes you have to embrace this thing. Let's move, Layla, called denial. Man, 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 man. All right, here we are. I'm a biblical preacher. I'm finally in my text. Mark 8, <laughs> verse 34. I still need my Bible to preach, other love. Some preachers don't. I don't know how they do it, but I still need my Bible. All right, Mark 4, 8, verse 34. The text says, he called the crowd with the disciples, said to him, said to them, if you want to become my what? Followers, let them deny themselves. A disciple is one who follows a target. Our target is Jesus. So here's Jesus giving a preemptive positioning of what it means. You must deny yourself. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. That's right. That's right. It's about to get a little tight in here, but they used to say back in the old church, it's tight, but it's right. <laughs> Jesus said to them, hey, look, discipleship, growth, requires, it's not optional, it requires a certain level of self-denial. Now that word, deny in the text, from the Greek translate to this, get this now, it means to disown. Wow. So if anyone wants to become my followers, let them disown themselves. Oh my God. Oh my God. Not let them disown other people, disown yourself. May I suggest to you that you are the biggest reason why you're not succeeding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're trying to look at other stuff and other things. No, it's you. Because you want your cake and eat it too. You want the blessings without going through nothing. You want the favor without training. You just want it to happen. That's microwave religion. And what microwave does, it put the poison of radiation in you and it eventually destroys your body. Wow. Wow. It takes longer in the conventional oven, but it's safer to cook when natural reality gets to it. Some of you all don't want to be cooked in the slow cooker. We need a type of crock pot anointing. Not microwave anointing. We got the simmer and let that thing get at us good. But everybody want a promotion, but to whom much is given. 
Much is required. I don't know how many times I told God, I don't know why you called me to do this. This is too much for me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because all y'all got to worry about is coming to church. I got to worry about how we're going to pay the bills. I got to worry about how we're going to have staff. And I got to worry about how the contract is going to get in the building. I got to worry about how I'm going to keep you safe. I got to worry about how we're going to deal with the city. I got to worry about how to go to the meet with the mayor and tell him that when it's snow, I need you to clean my street. I got to worry about all that. Yeah. And then y'all come here on Sunday and say, so I still want to work. And some of you all in your personal life, your own occupation, because this is my occupation, this is my vocation, you have to do that at your own job. Amen. You yeah. see other folks doing nothing. Come on. All Come time. on. All I time. mean, you can't wait without the salary. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. One of the things that drove me into retirement, because I got a list of salaries. Uh-huh. I said, I know I do more than you. Uh-huh. More than you. Uh-huh. I know I do more than you. Yeah. Definitely you. But your check is bigger than mine. God want to move us into a season where our pocketbook matches our positioning. Don't get this wrong. I'm not telling you that being a slow, being a slow cooker means that you should not have success. God wants to flip it. There is no fun in not being able to fund your life. Well, you got to worry about it. Can I pay this bill? You got to rob Peter, pay Paul, and Paul mad because you didn't give him his deposit? But you working 50 hours a week? That means I got to start denying myself. I got to start disowning some stuff. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get this now. Get this now. Lord, the time has gotten by me. So the critical question is, if we're going to grow, what are some other stuff we need to disown? Well, I surmise, oh, Lord, I feel this one right here. I surmise that a great place to continue is to disown enticing agendas that are ungodly. I'm going to come back around that corner. I said you need to disown enticing agendas that are ungodly. See, God stuff sometimes is tough, so that ain't what we want. We want the ungodly stuff. The stuff that make our flesh feel good. We want to smoke our way into the atmosphere. We want to drink our way into the atmosphere. We want to have multiple partners into the atmosphere. But then we say after we get out the bed with multiple partners, Lord, send me a husband and wife. How can I? Oh, my God. Oh, oh Lord. Pastor God know I got knees. He created me. Self-denial. We want more money, but you don't budget the money you have now. Because most of us are leaving here to go back out and we're going to spend twice as much as we would if we were just cooked today. My mama told me back in the day, broke people stay at home, boy. (laughs) Mama, why are we here today? Broke people stay at home. We go out when we got money. Here's the problem. According to your social media pages, Boy, y'all got some money. Oh, you got some money because you on a trip here, trip there, trip everywhere. But then I remember that scripture, Dr. Johnson, I got to hear this thing. The Bible says where your treasure is. There your heart will be also. How do I become wealthy? I become wealthy by changing my mindset. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I try to tell my son all the time, boy, stop spending every dime you got. He and I, we was at an Alpha convention this week, and, and, and and all of his libraries, his daddy was there, so he felt like, you know, he had the bank there.
So, Daddy, I want this. Daddy, oh, 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 son, I'm here for Alpha 2. I'm not here for you. So here's the point I'm trying to make. Here's the point I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make this point that you already had the resource. I already gave you money for the convention, so you blew it, and so now you're in trouble. But then on the flip side of that, I put all of his line brothers together and his whole chapter, and I told him, order whatever you want, and I'll pay for it. The reason why I did that is because, not because I really care about them, but I care about my son. And see, when you're connected to the right source, not only will you be blessed, but folk connected to you will be blessed because daddy will take care of those who are willing to deny themselves. There is a blessing when you say no to some ungodly stuff. That scripture, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. I got a deeper rela- uh, uh, revelation on that. I know we speak futuristically and prophetically. But look at it a little deeper. How about stuff you won't allow your eyes to see? Sometimes we let our eyes train on so much stuff that create, creates a sense of lust in us. That pulls us away from God. Because before we do it, we see it first. So eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. In other words, what I don't allow myself to see and who I don't listen to. Neither has it in the so heart of men. What I don't allow to become in my heart. Then God will take care of me because I have self-denied what I desire for the greater good because I understand that discipleship causes us to self-denial. And there's a deeper level to this. If you want to be a better disciple, you have to not, you have to discontinue to do stuff that you want to do sometimes. I can't go to the party tonight. I got to pray. I got to cancel my Amazon account because I'm in debt. I can't have Peacock, Netflix, Spotify, Apple Music, all these subscriptions I'm spending $150 on and I'm not tithing. Oh, I shouldn't say that. That may, that may, run, that may run some people away if I say that. No, no. The reason why you can't tithe is because Netflix got it. Well, I can't give my Netflix. I don't know what I'm gonna lose. I don't know what I'm gonna lose. You don't even look at it half a time, but just the confident knowing that you got. Sometimes you gotta deny yourself. Man, I went through all these subscriptions. I had. I started canceling stuff. I don't look at this. I had Paramount. I had all kind of stuff. Uh, t- I'm like, I don't look at this junk. It's about mental position. Somebody shout out denial. And then there's this thing called develop. See, discipleship requires us to be developed. Some of us are not baked products because we remain in the store of in the stages of dough. You're too doughy. You're doughy. There's no moisture in your reality because. You thought because you grew up with eating raw cookie dough that that was something you're supposed to do. It tastes good. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that's what the lack of development does. It allows you to think just because it tastes good that it's developing you. But true development, Drayshana, don't always come with stuff that tastes or feel good. I prove it to you the text. He says in verse 34, move Layla. If you want to be my disciples, you must take up your cross and follow me. Jesus uses his assignment on the cross as a signal for discipleship saying, if I must go through pain, then my disciples undoubtedly have to go through pain. If I'm the Savior, I got to be hooked up on the cross. 
for stuff I did not do. What do you think gonna happen to you for stuff that you did do? But the problem is we want grace without the cross. See, see, part of our development, part of our development is knowing and recognizing pain. Don't run from it. Don't try to hide it. Because some of the greatest stories are born out of painful moments. God is about to take your pain and create a story for you that's going to open up so many doors that you're going to see the victory in your pain. But the problem is, Phil, everybody want to get to Resurrection Sunday without going through that Good Friday. He got up, but he did die. How did he die? Because they put nails in his hand. Sometimes people will attack you with nails. Even when you didn't deserve it. They'll mess with your mind by figuratively putting that crown of thorn over your head. And you'll start thinking stuff you never thought before if you're not connected with God. And the reason why you got to stay on the cross because he had nails in his feet so he could not run. See, when you got your cross, you can't run when it gets hot. And Jesus said, no man taking my life, I lie down. In other words, he said, you can have my hands. You can have my feet because I'm going to prove to you that I'm going to take this pain. Because in three days, brother. And three days, sister. Can I tell you this? Some of us can't get to the three days because you don't want to take up your cross. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I used to complain so much about my life. And God said, every time you complain, you put down your cross. And then you restart the cycle. Because what complaining does, it takes you out the will of God. Because God has called us to grow. And sometimes we got to be like Jesus. Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. It don't feel good, but I give it over to you. You have reset the clock of favor over your life so many times because you have not Amen. want to truly be developed. Amen. Especially after COVID. God said, I allow COVID to happen. They still didn't get the message. We still have pre-COVID matriculation. Man, he set you down for two years and you came out with no idea, no business plan, no plan for your life. You got all that COVID money and now you broke again because somebody told you that your come up was tax time. And your mindset is just wait till I get my taxes. Just wait till I get my taxes. Because you've been tricked to think that $6,000 is a lot of money. I used to think that too. Until I saw $100,000 go out the window on stuff that we had to do. And yet, while we were still sinners. I'm not talking about after, I mean before you got saved. Yet while we were still sinning. He still died for us. If God has taken care of you when you have been out of order, out of alignment, out of his will, out of purpose, and you still can breathe, you still can pay a bill, what will God do when you say, God, for you I'm going to live? And for you I'm going to die? And I'm not letting no joker stop me from being in your will. Bump your neighbor and say, you got to take up your cross. Because he says, when you take up your cross, you can follow me. Part of our development is this. It is to consider who you're following. Some of you all don't realize it. But you have literally gave, given people the permission to be your leader. 
because you're submitting your business to them for advice when they're not even qualified to handle their own life. Why would you ask the unspiritual, the undisciplined, and the undisciple for advice over your life? When you haven't considered who you really should be following, that's following Jesus. Because Jesus knows the way from the grave. You know why? Because he's been there. That's why he said, take up your cross and follow me. He was saying it prophetically. But the reality is, I've had the pain. I've died. I've resurrected. All power has been given unto me. But you're still connected to unpowerful people. Do you realize you can love people from a distance? It's nothing wrong with that. I love you, but I can't hang with you. I love you, but I can't tell you my vision. I love you, but I can't trust you. I love you, but you can't roll with me. Because there ain't enough room in this car for you and my cross. My cross got the seat now. I'm following Jesus. Man, I tell people all the time, I wish I had the spiritual insight at 25 as I got at 43. Because church tricked me when I was coming up to believe that discipleship was just coming to church, speaking in tongues, getting baptized, and shouting. And we go home and say we had good church. But you know what good church is? Good church is when you replicate this idea of discipleship and you live out that Romans narrative that says, don't be conformed Come on. to this world. That's right. That's the word. But be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. So if you come to this church and you are a hot mess, because I specialize in hot mess people. Y'all yes. yes. know what I mean? Yes. God don't send me to super save and sedity. And I thank God for that because that'll get on my nerves. So I specialize in the hot mess. But if it's done right, if we cultivate the type of training here, and if you embrace it, some of that hot messness just start coming off of you. And then after some time, we'll look back and say, you remember how she came or he came to this church? But look at him now. But here's the problem with uh, Phil. When you try to create a discipling church, it creates a type of tension that makes some people uncomfortable and they leave before they get the message. So pastors have to battle with retention versus relationship with God. And so do I be cute today or do I stay true to form? Well, the problem is for many years I try to be cute. But here's the problem. Just think if any church get a hundred strong disciples. Do you know there's church with 10,000 people in there and there's not 100 strong disciples in that church? Wow. Attendance does not mean discipleship. Uh-huh. Big screens, smoke machines, lights, it does not mean discipleship. Discipleship is a way of living. Yeah. It's when I <laughs> preach to you, you go back and verify what I'm saying. Don't take my word for it. If I were you, you ought to go back to Mark chapter 8 Listen to my sermon on YouTube, and I know a lot of y'all don't because of the views. Listen to it, watch it, instead of listening to everybody else, listen to me first. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm not trying to take you away from your favorite preach. Go back and listen to me, because you ain't catching everything I'm saying right now. Get your notepad out, go verse by verse, word by word, and verify what I'm saying. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. See, I got a question for you. We got to go. Who have you been carrying your pain to? Or what have you been using to medicate your pain? Wow. Okay. Man, one time I was in the hospital, had stomach issues. I thought I was going to die. I really didn't think I was going to die. 
you know, I'm very soft when it comes to pain. I got a very low pain tolerance. So anything, I think I'm going to die. So I thought I was going to die. <laughs> but this time I really did. I was just, you know. Then my brothers came to the hospital. They, they was looking sad. I said, I really am getting ready to die. Then I heard... <laughs> Then, then, then I heard him say, well, he got to go to the test of care floor. A test of care? Wait a minute. <laughs> Man, back then, you, when you heard a test of care, you just thought it was immediate death. <laughs> <laughs> and so here I'm in. I, I, I was a young pastor. Now, I think I was only about third year pastor. And I, I was, you know, I was looking at the sky and I was like, Lord, is this time? <laughs> But I didn't realize they were slipping some morphine in me. And they gave me that little button to push that morphine. They said, they said, Mr. McCall, only push it when you're in pain. I pushed it. I got out the hospital, they gave me some Oxycontin and Percocet. But they said, only take it when you're in pain. Nikita, but I wasn't feeling pain, but I liked the way that medicine made me feel. Wow. So here I am pastoring, and now I'm dipping in a medicine bottle without feeling pain. And so I became dependent on a narcotic, not realizing in actuality I am now an addict. Because what was meant to be temporary, I made it permanent. So who are you giving yourself to? I made up in my mind, I'm getting ready to let y'all go. You have to have a certain level of worth to be invited into my personal space. Why does everybody know where you live? Everybody know where you live. And let me tell you something. When you start dating somebody, let me give you dating one-on-one. Don't let everybody you date come to your house. Don't let everybody you do what? They they should know where you live immediately. Come on back. And always be aware of somebody when they say they want you to come over. Uh, we can just chill today. I'm tired. <laughs> now, when you start cultivating a relationship, then you can see why I am. Because you know why? Sometimes we let spirits in our house and we, realize, we don't realize the reason why we're evil. Because they left, but their spirit still stayed. <laughs> Boy, I'm messing up up in here. And then some of us, Lord, I don't want to say it, but I got to say it because that's who I am. Some of us leave or let them leave and we don't even wash the sheets. And then some of you all got kids and let your kids jump on the bed. And realize why they going to school acting crazy. Because what I let in my house, I let in a child. Y'all miss this up in here. And even if they not in your bed, when they walk in your house, that spirit can catch your child. And that's why they act the way they do. Everybody's standing so we can go home. No, I'm walking out. I don't want Somebody shout out denial. denial. Somebody shout out develop. Yeah. Then somebody shout out determination. determination. He said in verse 35 For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who want to lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Jesus says to them, It's not that I want you to be irrelevant. Listen to me, church. He said, I just want your relevance to be birthed from my loins. In other words, Jesus wants you to consider him to help make you relevant. 
See, losing your life for Jesus' sake and the sake of the gospel simply says this. Lord, I'm an out loud believer. I'm determined to live my life out loud unapologetically for you. And I'm trusting you to unapologetically take care of me. See, when I want to grow, I have to deny. I have to have self-denial. I have to go through the process of development. But then I got to be determined that I will win. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to win. Every head bowed, every eye 